So first off, we are going to be printing what's known as a calibration cube. This is a part that has a known measurement. It's something that you can print very, very easily. And if you measure it and your value doesn't meet what it's supposed to, then you know something is wrong with your stepper motors. So if you remember from the assembly video, the motors that drive our printers are known as stepper motors. They basically work by having an incremental gear system or an electronic gear system known as steps. For example, if we want to move the x-axis one millimeter, we need to send 80 electronic pulses to our step motor. Same number for our y-axis and 400 for our z-axis. So these values may be really kind of close, but for a lot of projects that require that high tolerance, it's just not good enough. And so we are going to be printing something and do a little bit of math to then get our new projected value. We are going to give it a brand new step of number so that when we say, hey, move 20 millimeters, it moves exactly 20 millimeters. So to find this file, you can simply go to Thingiverse and download the 20 millimeter calibration cube and pull it into Kiera. And you can slice it with uh, very normal settings, four walls, 8%, nothing too crazy, and then send it onto your printer and we'll get that printing. So while that's printing, we're gonna go over a little bit of the math. So the math is very simple. It's actually just a proportional uh, formula. What we're gonna do is take our desired dimension. In this case, it will be 20 millimeters. And we're going to be dividing that by our measured dimension. This is where our calipers come in. Now, getting a pair of calipers, we don't need super duper high amount of accuracy. Uh, for 3D printing, we just wanna get to about a 10th of a millimeter. If you can get it in there, you're gonna be just fine with that. Once we can take that value, we're gonna be multiplying it by the machine's steps per millimeter, and that'll be whatever it is for that axis. And by multiplying all that together, we'll be getting our new steps per millimeter value. So for example, if I have a calibration cube like this, and I want to measure the X axis, then I can go across. I'm expecting 20 millimeters, but I'm actually getting just a little bit under, which means that my steps per millimeter isn't actually moving it far enough. So by dividing it by a smaller number, it's actually going to give me a larger number off the top. So instead of moving 80 steps per millimeter, it may move it 80.5. Uh, another example, if, you, if your part is a little bit too large, if you say, oh, my part should be 20 millimeters, but it's actually measuring out 21, then you just divide it, multiply it by 80 steps per millimeter, and it will give you your new steps per millimeter. So make sure you get these values for your X, Y, and Z axis, and then go ahead and plug it into your machine. You're gonna go into control, motion, steps per millimeter, and then you can click on all of the axes and change it. Then you can go back a couple pages and click save settings. Don't forget to do that. And then to get an even higher amount of accuracy, if you wanted to, you could print an even larger calibration cube to give you a higher degree of accuracy. Or you can actually print the same exact file over again, but with your new calibration settings. What this will do is that it will give you a brand new cube with those settings that you just put in. And they should be ever so slightly closer to that final value so then when you print something in real life and you need it to be right on the money, it makes it as perfect as it possibly can.